In a Fox News poll taken at the beginning of 2013, 83% of Americans said government spending was out of control. One attempt to stem the red ink was the sequester, a sort of parliamentary doomsday machine no sane lawmaker would dare set in motion. That was the theory. Would it hold? Do you actually see um, anything changing until we do hit some kind of government collapse? I hope not. January 31st, Butts County, Georgia. I believe in the Constitution as our founding fathers meant it. That's Congressman Paul Brown. President Obama had Republicans like him in mind when he proposed the sequester back in 2011. If we went back to the original intent of the Constitution, we wouldn't have a, a debt ceiling problem. People need to remember what the, what the sequester is, how it came about, and that was over a, a fight over the debt ceiling. A fight Andrew McCarthy of the National Review says was picked by Tea Party Republicans like Brown. A lot of the professional politicians of both parties said, oh, they're crazy, they're going to cause us to default, they're going to throw the world economy into chaos. But eventually, they forced a deal with the sequester on an unwilling Washington. The deal was this. If Republicans and Democrats could not cut $1.2 trillion of the growth of spending over 10 years, automatic cuts would kick in. Half would come from domestic spending, half from defense. We're not doing it. That's why Brown was torn over the sequester last winter. He desperately wants to downsize the government, except for the Pentagon. We need to make targeted cuts, but we need to have a strong national defense. We need to spend more money on the military. The White House's calculation was that Republicans would not be able to tolerate the sequester because of its impact on the defense budget. But former Clinton advisor William Galston says the sequester revealed something few in Washington expected. It's turned out to be an x-ray of changes inside the Republican Party where the automatic reflex of being pro-defense has been at least overlaid with an equally important impulse towards smaller government. It would take months for that x-ray image to fully develop. I think both parties have a sense that this would be a negative event for the economy. Remember Maryland Congressman John Delaney? Well, on February 12th, he headed to his first State of the Union address. I don't think a sequester is going to happen. Defense cuts were supposed to be a poison pill for yep. Republicans. They were never going to swallow it back in the conventional wisdom of the right. past. The President of the United States. Democrats, Republicans, business leaders, and economists have already said that these cuts, known here in Washington as the sequester, are a really bad idea. True, but they disagree on how to avoid them. Republicans want entitlement reform. The President asks for higher taxes and new spending programs. I'm announcing the launch of three more of these manufacturing hubs. Use some of our oil and gas revenues to fund an energy security trust. Put people to work as soon as possible on our most urgent repairs. Make high quality preschool available to every single child in America. Redesign America's high schools so they better equip graduates. Higher taxes on job producers, more spending. It's going to continue to destroy jobs. Last winter, our cameras followed you through the showdown, the sequester showdown. And one telling moment was after the State of the Union. Was that speech a turning point that some Republicans said, he's not hearing us, this thing's going to kick in? The president's not hearing the American people. They want spending cuts. And they see that as the, as the only mechanism where spending cuts are actually taking place. Turns out the Republicans almost like the poison. It was clearly a blunder by the president. It was just a complete misreading of the opposition. It will eviscerate job-creating investments in education and energy and medical research. The president tried to convince the public that the sequester cuts would be too painful to bear. Border Patrol agents will see their hours reduced. FBI agents will be furloughed. Federal prosecutors will have to close cases and let criminals go.
The president went into full chicken little mode. The sky is falling, he said. In fact, he said planes are going to fall out of the sky. Air traffic controllers and airport security will see cutbacks, which means more delays at airports across the country. Thousands of teachers and educators will be laid off. The problem is only a minority of Americans fear the cuts. More think they'll have a positive effect or make no difference at all. More ominous, perhaps, for the president, nearly half the country thought he deliberately exaggerated the effects of those cuts to try to scare people. And so, on March 1st, a unified Republican caucus lets the sequester cuts go into... Were Democrats surprised that they actually did. I think each side was surprised. The Democrats thought the Republicans would be so upset about the defense cut they'd never let it happen, and the Republicans thought that the Democrats would be so concerned about cuts to education and things like that that they'd never let it happen. And here it did. And here it did. The sequester cuts only a small percentage of increases in federal spending, but that was still a huge accomplishment for small government conservatives. Then, December 10th. Democrat and Republican negotiators agree to set aside the sequester and increase spending. Though they say their deal reduces the deficit, Tea Party groups howl. Speaker John Boehner bites back. Frankly, I just uh, think that uh, uh, they've lost all credibility. December 12th, the House passes the bill, but 62 Republicans vote no, including Tea Party conservative Paul Brown. Does this budget agreement roll back what Republicans say they accomplished with the sequester. Absolutely, there's no question. We've got to stop spending, and we've got to do it today, because that's the only way to stop this federal government that's out of control. Months ago, few predicted that the GOP would agree to ease the sequester, but that was before an ill-fated Tea Party power play that began in earnest last summer. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Coming up, the limits of leverage inside the long shot fight to defund Obamacare.